I would switch Jessica Hamby, but you're I mean dad Zeg is fuck right there. I, mean, I love her though man she's a character she was my fucking favorite character out of the whole fucking series all you know, right she, i haven't seen it yeah. so yeah i, I mm. can't speak on that yeah, she's like, just a hot looking girl that's that guess fun. If you want to become a member, check out our website at deathcursesociety.com. Check out the membership section. You can do it for as little as the price of a cup of coffee once a month. Before we get to our topic, which I'm really excited about because I think tonight's going to be a fun discussion, let's just uh, get on to thanking our members. Of course, our final girls and guys, Chris, Lorena, BD, and Tyrone. Our Crazy Ralphs. Oh, and look at there. We got a new one on the Crazy Ralphs. Oh. Bell's Fancy Woo. Creations. Yeah. Dr. Smiley. Raymond. And uh, the whole damn enchilada pod. We're going to have to get a uh, a business name for Raymond. So we, we have like all suits. <laughs> yeah. And of course, our camp counselors. 42nd Street Pete. Corey. Luke. Michigan Dave. Jimmy and Rachel. Good luck on the move again. Stacy Lynn. Orlando. Happy birthday again. Patricia, Kristen, and JJ. Thank you, guys. I got it. Um, this list, I think, is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, what we're doing, since we reviewed Abigail last week, we told you last week about this, we're uh, ranking our top five vampire kids. And that includes children to... What what we what did you say? Seventeen. Seventeen was the cutoff. We said seventeen, mm -hmm. which Fair which enough. helped helped immensely. So Fair enough. <laughs> so and uh, feel free if you have a yeah. list or just a favorite, throw those in the comments and uh, we'll discuss those as too as well. And uh, there may be one or two that don't make either of our list that somebody likes. I don't know. I think we've got a. It's a nice eclectic mix of vampire kids. <laughs> yeah. I uh I will say though. I will say though, my list is definitely crank as fuck. So <laughs> well be, be I, prepared. I, I <laughs> You expect nothing more. I less? had it, well, I, I did a little research on a couple of the ones you put on there and I went like, Oh yeah, okay, I, I get it. You know, it's yes. Crank as fuck is the operative term here. Huh? Slow burn. Let's see here. I think Ziggy, you get to go first. I, think I so. am a thunder stealing prick fuck tonight. So, Ziggy, yeah. why don't you take the honors and kick us off with the top five vampire kids of your choosing? It'll be my pleasure, Crank. Uh, it was fun. I mean, this was a fun list to put together vampires, and then just something about kid vampires are extra creepy and. They can take you down, man. They got the strength. And if they've been around long enough, they got the fucking smarts how to do it. As you're going to see here. We're going to start right away. Just saw the movie. Just made the list. Abigail. She's on my list. Alicia Weir. Uh, just loved. She actually captured 300 years of experience, in my opinion, in her portrayal and the way she delivered her lines. It was fucking believable, man. I loved it. She was good that way. Um, it had violence. It was scary at times. It had some gore in it. And she's just, I just love the, the vampires in this world are fucking awesome. So uh, they, they had to make this list for sure. And better late than never. At least we got it in just in time. Number four, one that has always stuck with me for the years since I've seen it. Uh, True Blood back HBO put this series out. I think Entourage had wrapped up. I was I had a gap in my, you know, HBO television. So True Blood comes on, and after a while, the character Jessica Hamby mm. joins the cast. Deborah Ann Wolf, 
redhead, beautiful. Oh, crank. That is. Did perfect. I get a good? Did I get dude, a good picture? Dude, that's that's what I'm talking about. See, this this is why. But she's great. I, uh, I had I had one I had one specific assignment when I was gathering photos for the, <laughs> building the list, the graphics, and everything, and he was just like, "Hey, when you come to that True Blood chick, find a sexy <laughs> photo." I was like, "All right, I got you, man. I got Absolutely you." Plenty to pick from. I believe know. it. Her character is really good. She's turned at seventeen. Uh, one of her story arcs, she's turned as a virgin. So every time she gets a boyfriend and has sex, she wakes up in the morning. She's regenerated. You know what I'm saying? What a pain in the ass. So uh, just one of the many things huh. they have for in this world. That's a weird take on the subject, but okay. Uh, dude, True Blood is fucking crazy, dude. It, these guys are the biggest horn dogs you've ever seen that made this. You you would freak out. Uh, I, I, I've, had, I've had a few people tell me I need to watch that. Uh, but I've, I've also had a few people tell me I need to watch The Vampire Diaries, too, and I, I have not seen mm -hmm. either of those. I've not seen Vampire Diaries. I have seen most of True Blood, and I was that one was good at least throughout the first three, four seasons, and then started getting a little crazy as they do. Now, True Blood's uh, the one with uh, Anna Paquin, right? Yes, and oh boy, is she nice in that as well. <laughs> uh, fuck, she could have made this list. She becomes, but she's not really a vampire. She's something else. I'm not going to spoil that here. Okay. Please, uh, please. Number three. Oh yes. Uh, if you place bets with the Colonel, you win. Evil Ed Thompson from Fright Night. Stephen Jeffries portrays this misfit loser, but best friends with Charlie Brewster in Fright Night. And then, of course, tired of being picked on, su seduced by the vampire to join, and he accepts with the the embrace of the hand, and then becomes one of the scariest fucking vampires of the whole movie just good stuff man uh scary scary uh number two i mean shit this is like this is as good as it gets almost david marco paul and Dwayne, the fucking lost boys man yes yes they were high school age they were 17 or or less and uh Yes, come on, man. They were fucking great-looking vampires. They they were cool. You wanted to be a vampire seeing this movie. You would have joined. I would have joined. Crank would have joined. I'm sure FaZe was in. Fuck, man. It would have been great. We all would have been there. I already did join. You didn't know that? Rookie. All right. Um, but yes, of course. The Lost Boys, I mean, this was this was the debate. Remember we were saying like we were, we were looking for that cutoff age? I mean, we could have made it 12. That would have made it this a lot fucking tougher to oh, do. Oh, God. That would have been really tougher. Yeah. Uh, so in 17, that opened up the door for Jessica Hambry, the Lost Boys, and uh, maybe more. Evil we'll Ed. See. Evil, Evil Ed. Ed was closer Evil. to 16, probably. I'd say, yep, they were, they were 15, quite 16. seniors yet. They were probably 10th, 11th grade. Yeah. All right. We got honorable mentions here. And I, I, I know this is going to cause a little controversy because... Uh, but uh, I thought she was great. I loved her in almost everything she's done. She's obviously she's Mary Jane Park, Mary Jane in uh, Spider Man movies. Kristen Dunst, Claudia in Interview with a Vampire. Uh, she's. I don't think she got enough screen time in this, but Crank did make some good points on it. That the time she had, they crammed a centuries into and. I have to give him that. I have to give him that. So that's don't why. You, she's don't you? Afraid. Don't you fucking uh, take my argument from me? No, no, <laughs> I won't. I won't. Uh, well, I, it's adding to what I've already brought up. See, because my argument is going to be why she's so low on your fucking list. In an honorable mention, she should at least be above it. The uh, she should at least be in four or five. Yeah, that's on my list. So, I'm I'm aware, but I'm telling you what I feel about her, and yeah, it's gonna de de you know de bomb yours a little bit, but uh, it it is she's she's great, but uh, I like the other ones I have here a little bit better, and uh, shit, I would love to see her vampire in an Abigail type story. That would be fucking sweet, for sure. Maybe that would have got her a little higher. Honorable mention number two. Fair enough. Fair enough. Buffy the Vampire Slayer introduced us to Benny, David Arquette. And uh, 
one of the greatest lines in the whole movie, Benny's a vampire and floats <laughs> up to uh, Luke Perry's window and says, you know, I'm hungry. And Luke Perry looks at him and goes, you're floating. You know, it's a, I always fucking love that scene. It made him an unforgettable character for me, man. And uh, for a silly movie as that is, he's he's a pretty good vampire, man. Uh, finally, my last honorable mention, and this one almost could have been five for me. Uh, Homer from Near Dark, Joshua John Miller. Near Dark, remember? Hmm. They did the same kind of things. Like, they had the scams down where his bike was like, oh, I'm lost. My bike's wrecked. Oh, let me give you a ride. Boom, they got their victim. Right. Mm -hmm. A great fucking movie if you've never seen it. Um, and, and again, he's not in it enough to really... He's, he's just a side character. He's just in there. It's funny. He's the, I think he's the second oldest vampire in the whole gang, but he's like stuck at 13 or 14 years yeah, old. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So a uh, cool character, honorable mention here. And side number note, one. Side note before you get to your number yeah. one. Um, this actor, Joshua John Miller, still acting to this day. Has a movie coming out in a few months with uh, Russell Crowe, The Exorcism. That he's in. I saw a, a modern picture and I kind of went that. Eh, I still see Homer in there. You know, I, I still, still see, see it. it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, also, do you know who his brother is? Oh. I don't know. I'm, I went down all the Millers. The only Miller that came to mind was Victor Miller. Nope. Doesn't share the same name. Jason Patrick. Patrick. Ah. From uh, The Lost Boys. Of course. Well, there you go. See? And his, his dad was uh, in The Exorcist. Jason Miller in The Exorcist. Oh, the priest? The priest, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at this. See? Yeah. So Bonded by evil and vampirism. How do you like that? <laughs> I found that out while I was doing you know research on the list and digging up graphics and stuff. So I thought that was interesting. Like I said, as an honorable mention, I just went, okay. You know, it's a... Uh... He gets all I need on him. I uh, couldn't uh, find very many good pictures of him, though. Not well-lit yeah, was... ones, especially. He was always in the dark. He was standing with... Uh... Who the fuck was it? I don't remember now. It was like, oh, yeah, they both looked pretty, like, different. I mean, he's a lot, obviously, you know, he's 50 now, so... Right. But uh, he's a little... Filled out a little bit since 13. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Number one, you've been waiting so patiently. Um, and I, to me, th t it's almost the same kind of stupid thing. They don't have a whole lot of screen time either, but God damn it. The screen time they have hit you in the face. Both of these guys are terrifying and stuck with me all these years. Danny and Ralphie Glick, Salem's Lot, the fucking let me in the window, the caretaker jumping in the grave and opening up Ralphie's coffin. <laughs> Fuck, dude. This shit is the nightmare sauce all the way. These guys are the scariest ones. The eyes, the fucking fangs, the, the trying to get in your head and get you to open that window and open that coffin, calling you in. Scary fucking shit. Uh, nailed it. Stephen King couldn't have written it any better and, and made it any scarier. Those guys brought it to fucking life. Number one, hands down. Yeah. All right. Also, Brad Savage, Tracy Savage's Savage. brother. Mm -hmm. Yep. Friday the 13th alum. Uh, yep. She mentioned that herself right on these airwaves. That's right. That's how I heard about that. Yeah. I didn't know that. But it is pretty common. It's out there. Yeah. Excellent list there, Ziggy. All right, so folks, let's dissect this and tell him where he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, each list is to their own, just like we. I were. know, I know, I know. I'll, um, get ready. If you watch all these movies, even two of these movies in a row, you will fall asleep on Crank's list. But uh, good luck. <clears throat> Shut the fuck up. Claudia should be on the list. <laughs> Grizzly Gia? says Claudia should be on the list, like on the list. Not, not in a, uh, an honorable mention. It's on the list. Here. I'm standing by it. BK has got a list right on time here. Let's get that up there. He says, uh, let's see. Number five, Darcy from Married with Children. Um, oh, fuck. I didn't even think okay, about yeah. that one. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. From Fright Night. 
I can't remember her character's name right now, but Amy, yeah. Amy. Yeah. Uh, that's his number five. Number four, Abigail. Number three, uh, the true blood. Chick. <laughs> number two, evil Ed. If you and know, number, you know, if you know, you know, and number one, the Glick brothers. All right. All right. Fuck yeah. You're going to have to be on the, uh, golf clap. I got it. Uh, Here we go. Patricia's got a list. She says, Eva Led from Fright Night. Number five. Number four, Homer from Near Dark. Number three, Claudia from Interview. Number two, Ralphie from Salem's Lot. Uh, number one, El Ellie from Let the Right One In. And honorable mentions, Mark from Once Bitten. That's a good one. Yep. Ah. <laughs> Abby, Abby from Let Me In. And Corda Spooky. from Spookies. And Emma uh, from The Strain. All right. There we there's go. There's some deep cuts. Yeah. Excellent list there as well, Patricia. Oh. Damn Christopher's, it. Christopher's got his list. Number five, Abigail. Number four, Ellie uh, from Let the Right One In. Number three, Danny from Salem's Lot. All right. See, there's hmm. Danny and Ralphie there. <laughs> Which one, man? They're both fucking... Right. Uh, number two, Claudia, and number one, David from the Lost Boys. Excellent list there, Christopher. <laughs> Joshua's got a list. He says number five, Abigail. I like that. I like that she's making the list. Yeah, yeah. And she, this movie, I think, made an impression, and that character made an impression. So I am happy she's making pretty much everyone's list. Uh, <laughs> number four, Homer from Near Dark. Number three, David and the gang from Lost Boys. Number two, Claudia. And number one, Evil Ed. Honorable mentions, Danny Glick and right. Benny, I think. Yeah. All right. Excellent list, Joshua. Yes, it is. Got it now. Bill's got his list. He, he, put it, he put it up early. That's why I almost missed it. Uh, he says, number five, let me in. So I assume Abby. Number four, uh, either Danny or and or Ralphie Glick from Salem's Lot. Number three, David and the gang from the Lost Boys. Number two, Abigail. And number one, Claudia from Interview, to a Vamp Interview with a Vampire. Excellent. Honorable mentions, uh, 30 Days of Night, Near Dark, and Daybreakers. Daybreakers was so close on my list, but did not quite make it all right excellent list i guess i mean i yeah i still think hey, at least she's on there i could have left her ass off there's a couple more <laughs> i had to let go you know and not put on that's really the only one i disagree with is the claudia place but everything else i'm cool with see yeah so yeah fuck you fuck you ziggy uh, let's see here <laughs> what would fit i would switch jessica hamby but you're I mean, Dad Zag is fuck right there. I, mean, I loved her though, man. She's a character. She was my fucking favorite character out of the whole fucking series. All you know right, I, mean? I haven't seen it, yeah. so yeah, I, I mm. can't speak on that. Yeah, she's like, just a hot looking girl. That Zag is fuck. Everybody, everybody's I, list, everybody's list so far that I remember had Claudia higher than uh, at least Abigail. So just saying, just saying. saying. That's that's everybody else. You're you're I on mean, a fucking you're on a fucking island right now. <laughs> I'm an island with fucking uh, Jessica Hamby. Cool. And to the both of you anyway. Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. And Faze, you are an asshole as well. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. All right, folks. It is. It's time to get crank as fuck. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy! Grab grab, grab your the pillow there. And, and the warm milk. Yep. Grab your pillow there, Ziggy. Our <laughs> fucky ranking. So. Uh, first off, at number five for top vampire kids, uh, one of the few places that Ziggy and I are going to agree. Abigail, number five. Yeah, she was just fun, and like he said, uh, played that role so well as a three hundred year old kid with all the experience and uh i'm surprised you didn't mention the line but i will since you didn't yeah. do it um you know where she has that moment it's like it takes about it takes about three gener or 
what is it, three centuries to learn all the cool tricks, you know? Yep. It takes a that, long that's... fucking time to learn all the cool vampire shit. Yeah, that was a yep. that was a great line. <laughs> um, but yeah, she she kicked ass too. And I you slightly mentioned this, and I think we talked about this a little bit last week, but I liked that the vampires were slightly different looking than your you know traditional Dracula or whatever. You know, they the the teeth were all sharp whenever they transformed and everything instead of just a couple of fangs or whatever um, but yeah i really dug this movie i'm looking forward to when it uh is available on blu-ray or whatever but number four for me and i'll be honest i'm shocked this is this is as low as it is on my list because i love this movie this movie if we when we ranked vampire movies would probably be higher than some of the movies that come after this list based on the characters. But, uh, yeah, uh, David and the gang from the Lost Boys at number four. Uh, you'll see why in a little bit, but uh, I, they bump down just a touch. And, but I do think this is probably my second or third favorite vampire movie of all time mm. um so i think it movie in general slightly higher these characters just a little bit lower but, but that's because of the three i have ahead um here's where i'm probably going to get some distasteful comments from some of the audience out there uh and this may be a uh a, a relatively soon topic coming up mm -hmm. but i'm gonna go with abby from let me in at number three um i'll be honest ellie from let the right one in is not on my list and because i like let me in we've talked about this multiple times i like let me in much better than the original and a lot of it has to do with uh chloe Gr chloe grace moretz she is fantastic actress i've always enjoyed her and she i think she pulls it off a lot better than ellie and the actress that played ellie in the original so number three abby yeah yeah go ahead shrug your fucking shoulders down there i'm fine with it <sighs> you I'm not, i wasn't talking to you <laughs> well well i was talking to you <laughs> number two <laughs> Well, we're waiting. Jesus Christ, man. You had 25 minutes to go through your list. I've been talking for like three. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, number two for me. I this was, this was one of the movies I came across uh, over the last week or so. And I am glad I did. I can't believe I haven't seen it before because I love this director. Um, I didn't really know. There's one actor in it that I'm a fan of as well, but, um, and I've heard good, I've heard good things about this movie, but I just never sat down and watched it. But I am Eleanor Webb from Byzantium, um, played by, and I'm going to say this hopefully right. It's an Irish name. Uh, Saoirse, Saoirse Ronan. Yeah. Um, this movie is, while it's got some traditional aspects of the vampire itself, is a very different take. And if you guys haven't seen it, uh, track it down. I think it's on, I think I saw it on the Roku channel. Um, but it's uh, directed by Neil Jordan, who also did Interview with a Vampire. Um, and uh, I've always liked his stuff, even dating back to like... Uh, 1992's The Crying Game, which he wrote and directed and won an original screenplay Oscar for. Um, he has a way of making just dark things and sadness amongst characters and amongst situations some of the most beautiful, you know, displays in a film. And I, I just love his style. But this vampire uh quite different she's not 
she's not vicious. She's she she's compl- pretty much the opposite. And I I really dug this movie, man. Uh, I hope some of you in the comments have seen this and can discuss this a little bit with me. But if you haven't seen it, check out Byzantium. And uh, Eleanor Webb is my number two. Honorable mentions for me. Uh, this is where it gets... This one. This one's really crank as fuck. Um, I really fucking enjoyed this movie when we watched it a few years ago. But I'm going with Thomas from My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To. Uh, I want to say it came out in 2020. Um, a different kind of movie. Thomas is so... He, he doesn't feed enough to be a strong vampire because his, his older brother and sister are just feeding him enough with you know, vagrants and you know homeless people that they find to keep him alive. But they don't want him to get stronger and stronger because they don't know what will happen. Um, but again, this is another, it's a sad movie, but I really enjoyed this one. And I thought Owen Campbell, who played Thomas, uh, did very well in this. And this also has a uh, Patrick Fugit who was, uh, in Almost Famous. He was the, he was the kid in Almost Famous. Uh, interesting movie. Uh, I, I, this is one I went out and bought almost immediately after I watched it. Check it out. It's called My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To. That's my first honorable mention. Second honorable mention, I I wish these were higher, but, or I wish this guy was higher, but really, like he mentioned, like Ziggy mentioned, not a whole lot of screen time. Yes, they were brutal while they were there, uh, but I will say this image alone of Ralphie Glick from Salem's Lot, one of those that sticks with you forever. This is what you go to. When someone says Salem's Lot, this is the first thing you think of. That's the first thing sure. you think of. Uh, and that's that's staying power right there. Because this was, what, 1980? 79. 79 was when this yep. came out? So, that's some staying power right there, folks. Uh, and I haven't seen this in a long fucking time. But I, I tried to sit down and watch it not too long ago. And... and I picked the wrong time to watch it because something something happened and I got pulled away. It's but, still intense, man. Yeah. I'm going to watch it again soon. I, I just haven't decided when. But uh, My last honorable mention, Benny. Yeah. Uh, David Arquette plays this so fun. <sighs> and I, I've, I've, got a, I've got a sweet spot for this movie in general just because it's so goofy. Um... You know, Donald Sutherland, who's normally a very, very serious actor, uh, and Rutger Hauer, who are normally just badasses in movies, kind of play against type in this with, with a little comedy. And it was it was refreshing to see. And uh, I I hadn't seen that out of them before. Now, David and then David Arquette just comes out of nowhere. This is one of his early roles, wasn't it? Maybe first or. No, this one is. Uh, you know, he's very young in this. I mean, fuck that. Came out. Uh, 92. 92. And it, like, did you ever read the comics prior to the movie? No. No. You know, the inspiration of it. I mean, that's where, and that's why I think it, it why it's so successful is they kept a lot of that shit from that tone of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then uh, the people, they brought in some big fucking stars that weren't, were totally fine to get silly. And have fun with it, and they did. I th- I thought it was too I thought it was too fun, and and he is he's definitely a memorable character in the movie. You know, I'm hungry. I'm, you're floating. You're floating. <laughs> <laughs> fun movie. I, I never got into the series though. Did you ever watch the series? A little, but yeah. I don't know, dude. Like I got a buddy that he's he's deep into the Charmed. Remember Charmed came along yeah. to right around this time. I, if I wasn't doing anything and it was on, I would watch. But I mean, and I remember Angel spinning off from uh, Buffy, mm-hmm. wasn't that? So yeah, right. and it, it just got crazy, kind of like the fucking Walking Dead. It was just yeah. too much. Yeah. Well, I I never watched the 
the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series. Um, you know, I've heard some good things about it, but you know, not a lot of people still talk about that one. Not not the series anymore. You know, I don't. Keller, hear it Keller was pretty good in the in the main character, but I mean. The movie has she's she's a much better fit. I thought mm. she looks. I don't know. I got you. She looks more like the comics and stuff, right? Well, and folks, if you haven't figured it out by now, my number one clearly, Claudia from Interview with the Vampire. Um, I I get that she has limited screen time. I he, I hear your argument, Ziggy, but the thing about that is Kirsten Dunst goes through the widest range of emotions and character development in the 30, 40 minutes that she's even in the movie. You know what I mean? Because when you first see her, she's this damn near homeless, you know, motherless now child who's just distraught. And then by the time her end comes... It's, you know, she's gone through, you know, puberty in a way, you know, and you, you see that up and down relationship with her, with her dads. Uh, she goes through anger. She goes through revenge. She goes through resentment. And Kirsten is fucking flawless in this role. Uh, I also love the fact that uh, Anne Rice kind of created this character as a tribute to her daughter who had recently passed away. And that, you know, as she's writing this character, she's going through that catharsis of, of her own daughter again. So that kind of probably helped me elevate Claudia to number one. But mm. um, I've always loved, I've always loved that movie. I've always loved this book and the series, most of the series. And, uh, I thought Kirsten was a, a perfection choice for the role. So, number one, Claudia, Interview with the Vampire. That. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. <laughs> no, I was, that is it. That, that was um, it. Yeah. No, no, no. Your number one, my honorable mention, my number one, your honorable mention, cancels each other out. I'm totally fine with it. This is true. Good point. (laughs) So, Uh, because I I challenge anybody to find a scarier, tenser moment in either one of those scenes with those Glick brothers as vampires, Mm. I challenge you. Scary wise, and that's what I went with. On I went for tried to go with the the scarier, the ones that were disturbing to me as the younger person that I was. See, I went for the ones that you know made an impact on screen and, and as as the characters well in abigail i again i love the way she captured her experience and i think she did it better than Kristen dunst in my opinion just with the with what she had to spit her lines was cooler much cooler and uh, I, and I, I i get it i like interview the vampire man but I just, again she's on the list she got her spot but uh you know you want to call her number six? That's fine too. Um, but uh, you know, I I did love when she the moment she turned and she went porcelain white and her hair permed. You know, right? That was all cool and everything. And uh, and she had a great look as a vampire, very majestic and very, you know, uh, just spiritual almost. All right, he says. Of course, number five, Lucy from the nineteen seventy nine Frank Langella Dracula. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, number four, Evil Ed. Number three, The Glick Brothers. Number two, number two, Abigail. Wow, Damn. there's the highest rating for her. Damn. Not bad. And, but number one, Claudia. Claudia. Excellent. I'm Excellent not, choice there, Joseph. I'm not mad at anybody that put Claudia number one. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Excellent list there, Joseph. Joseph, of course, you get the list. Gina says, uh, number five, Interview with a Vampire. Hmm. 
Number four, Lost Boys. All right. Number three, Fright Night. Number two, Abigail. And number one, Salem's Lot. Excellent two, list, Gina. Two number two votes for Abigail. She's moving right. up. She's moving already. Up. Not bad. Not Not bad. bad. Excellent to list. Sad. Excellent list, Gina. Gina, thank you. And I slid way down to avoid saying F you. You put Salem Slide at number one. Of course, I'm giving her a clap. You know what? She... Two claps. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Jeez, man. Faze, I didn't do any graphics for you, but you said uh, you had put together a list of some sort. Yeah, I didn't really think to give it to you, but, you know, graphics. I've never really done this with you guys before, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, go ahead, man. I don't know. It was kind of tough to put together. I mean, I've seen all these movies. I I've kind of mentioned it with the guys last night. You know, ranking these characters is very different from ranking these movies. Right, right. Like, that was my if point. I were ranking these movies, they would be in a very different order. Mm -hmm. But that said, with the six that I came up with, there's not really an honorable mention. I guess there's one. I had Benny from Buffy at the bottom. Then, along with you guys, Abigail at number five. Evil Crazy. Ed at number four from Fright Night. Danny and Ralphie from Salem's Lot at number three. If I had to pick one, I would go with Ralphie. Hmm. And one and two are so interchangeable. I, I, it really is hard for me to say, but I, I have on here Claudia for number two from Interview, and then David and the crew of Lost Boys is number one. But those could. Yeah, that's enough. I don't need to hear anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding him. <laughs> Ziggy's, Ziggy's just giving you the, the golf clap because you pissed me off. <laughs> How did I piss you off? She's at number two. Number two, please. And she's like, close, man. And I, I, I'm kidding. I may have to read the book again because I really do love the book. Dude, the book is so good. It's... I was thinking was more of movies. It was so different from a lot I of books I was reading back then, too. If we went by the book, I don't know, man. She probably would make my top five. If we're going solely off the book, she would be my number one here, I think. like, I can't. She's I can't a lot deeper on. in the book, bro. Oh, yeah, of course she is. But I can't go off the book anymore. I, we can't. Most we of the book this because... is about movies. Right. Mm -hmm. Since this is about movies, I would probably put David and crew up above them. Let's look at these lists. Sorry for a minute there, uh, Faze, but... <laughs> Faze, Faze, Faze. He's back there somewhere. He's just in the back. Uh, so Abigail got the, Abigail got in the same spot. And you made a good point since I had your number one as an honorable mention and you had my number one as an honorable mention. That kind of evens out. I even had Claudia as my number one honorable mention, so we're splitting yeah, airs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had both Benny as an honorable mention, and then we both had the Lost Boys and... No Homer for you, huh? Abigail. No, he didn't make that big, big of an impression on me, but he, we've talked about this before. Near Dark doesn't... I, I like Near Dark, but it's not... In my favorites, a more, lot. We needed a couple of more hunting scenes, and I think that would be a fucking monster of a memorable vampire film. But it's just that's like you get like a good half hour, forty minutes of them doing vampire stuff, and the rest of it is them on the run. And I'll be honest, I didn't have Fright Night either, which almost surprises me. But what Evil Ed? Yeah, I didn't even have him on my list at all. Or any of the Fright Night people, like even even Amy. Amy, I I I'm I kind of kicking yourself that, for man. that that yeah you know that's uh because she was a, another memorable fuck she's the poster fucking vampire that thing and she's definitely yeah. qualifies but I, I I didn't even think of it like that. Right. I think Ed is a bit more. I the, my favorite. I looked for it when I was trying to make that ID today. Uh, when he's in the car and just kind of laughing at him, and when they're driving away in the jeep, that shit is some nightmare stuff, man. And then, <laughs> and then when I put in there, when he's he thinks he's going to get Peter Vincent, and he's got the orange, red wig on, right? Mrs. Brewster, 
and he's just bat and and I'm kind of surprised you didn't have uh, Ellie from Let the Right One In on your list. I thought that was going to show up, but I think I just liked what I had a little bit better. Fair enough. All right, one more time. Let's thank our members, of course. First off, to there we go. First off, to our final girls and guys: Chris, Lorena, BD, and Tyrone. Happy birthday one last time, Lorena. Uh, smooth. Thanks to our crazy Ralphs, Bell's Fancy Creations, which just joined us this week. Well, actually, last week, but they did it while we were on the air, and I couldn't do anything about it. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. God damn it, thank and you. And also, Dr. Smiley, Raymond, and the whole damn enchilada pod. And then, of course, thanks to our camp counselors, 42nd Street Pete, Corey, Luke, Michigan Dave, Jimmy and Rachel, Stacy Lynn, Orlando, Patricia, Kristen, and JJ. Thank you, guys. It's just a love.